Hello, hi, welcome back to my channel. It's been about five years since my last video. Coincidentally, the age of my youngest child. I'm going to make this dog today. He is an American Staffy and his name is Odin. He's my nephew's dog and he will be going on top of the baby shower cake that I'm making for my nephew and his partner in a few weeks time. So let's go back in time and make him. Starting off with some fondant, I use bagels and I'm just kneading it to get it nice and soft and pliable straight from the packet. Then I'm going to add some tylos. This is an undisclosed amount. I always just tip a little bit out and then smoosh my fondant into it till I feel like it's the right consistency. I want it a little bit thick so it will hold shape. Um, you'll need some shortening on your hands just to work that back in and make it a bit soft again. Really squish it in there. And roll it using the warmth of your hands to make sure there's no cracks. And now I'm going to start shaping the head. Starting with the muzzle, just sort of pinching it, manipulating it to bring that muzzle out. It does look long first, but I will be smooshing it. Um, we're doing the shape of the head. Staffies have a real boxy kind of head and that ridge on the top of their head. And here I'm just pressing in uh, where the eyes will go, sort of creating a bridge for the muzzle. There's a little bit of something there that I don't want, so I'm just going to pick it out and smooth it over. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Just making sure it's how I want it. And checking the profile too. That looks good from all angles. Then I'm going to grab a ball tool and press in the eye sockets. And I'm always fixing the shape because it does move around when you're holding it and doing his nose. Now that smooshed the muzzle in and made a really cute profile. I'm pretty happy with that. Then grab the veining tool and I'm making the upper lip. These are called the flues. I looked that up just for you guys. I'm gonna mark where the mouth will end and Staffies are quite well known for their always smiling mouths. So we're gonna dig that veining tool in and drag it through the fondant up to the points that we made for his cheeks. And I'm gonna grab the other side of the veining tool and start creating his lower lip and his open mouth. So I'm just poking it in and sort of stretching it out. I'm trying to be conscious of the look of the lower lip as well. I want it to be nice and even and thick. And just using that line of the smile as a guide for the open mouth. Always checking the shape that it's still how I want it. Then using a smaller ball tool just to emphasize his smile and his cheeks. And then poking it on a toothpick, finding something to sit on. And now I'm going to make his ears. So Tylos, bit of shortening. Once it's all mixed in, what I'm trying to do here is get two balls the same size so I know that the ears will be the same size. And I sort of rolled it into a cone and then flattened it out, making sure it's a nice pointy shape, using the veining tool just to create the inside of the ear. Sorry, it's off camera. I'll do the next one properly. Yep, we've realised it's not on camera. So that's what I'm doing. 
reshaping and I've cut them so they will fit nicely on the head using some glue. I just use fondant and water and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's really good glue. Just pressing the ears on and just pinching at the sides, making sure the shape's how I want it, nice and neat, and that they're secure. He really looks like a pig at this point. Little piggy face. Using the veining tool just to put in these little, uh, they look like freckles. They're where the whiskers come out of. Putting that to the side. And then I notice that it's watching me. So I turn it around and he keeps moving. So this toothpick is not doing its job. Well, should we put it there? No, we won't put it there. We'll put it there. That's a flower former and it will keep the shape, the round shape of his head. So we'll use that. Now I'm going to make his body. Just figuring out how much I'm going to need. And I use a lot of tylos here because I want the body to dry fairly quickly so it can support all the body parts and the head. So I've realized it's too much tylo, so I'm just going to push it to the side so I can use it for the next bits. Just adding a little tiny bit more till I know it's firmer. I'm going to hold its shape. Stretching it through, warming it up, rolling into a ball, and then going for the shape that I want. Checking the size. Looks okay. So now I'm going to try and build up the chest. Dogs actually do have a bigger chest than they do um, like pelvis, abdomen region. So I'm trying to make sure that the chest is prominent. And I stuff around with this for a while. I have laid it flat for this bit. I wished it wasn't so boxy, but you get away with it because Daffy's do have a real boxy kind of body or stocky. I realized it was too much, so I just pinched it off and neatened it up on the bottom. Getting some more fondant, more tylos, stretching it through, more shortening. And I'm going to make the legs now. So just making sure it's nicely incorporated and cutting it in half. to make sure that they're going to be the same size. So just shaping the leg, there's the thigh and the bottom of his leg and just twisting it to make a little ball for the paws, paw on the end. And then here I put in his toes and for some reason I decided to give him five toes. I don't know why I did that. Checking if it looks okay. It looks all right, so put some glue on there. To hold that leg on just using that bit of foam just to hold it for me while I make the other leg thigh leg paw and it was here that I realized oh no they only need that many toes some glue and this is a real characteristic way that a staffy sits as well sort of slouching so that's what I was going for there, slouching on one leg. Now I'm going to do his front legs, just getting the thickness I want, roughly getting the length. I'm going to do the paw and check it for the length. Chop his toes in, fold it back. I thought that made it look pretty good. Checking for the length and adding these little recesses for the fondant to have something to stick to. And I've decided to use toothpicks because there is going to be a bit of weight on these legs with that body leaning over into it. I'm just getting them the right length. And then twisting the toothpick into the fondant to make sure it doesn't squash it. Bit of glue back into that hole we made and smoothing the leg on. Uh, this is a clay shaper tool. You can buy sugar shapers, but I've had these ones for ages and I find them really useful. And the other leg now. Yep, 
and same thing on that side, a little bit long. And using my fingers first to smooth it on and then the clay shaper just to neaten it up. Just making sure his paws are how I want them to look. And there we go, we've got the basic shape. I've noticed a bit of his, uh, the back of his thigh is a bit too chunky, so I just cut it off there, like that. And just neaten that cut up. Now I'm making his tail. Staffies have a real whip-like tail. If you've ever been whipped by a staffy tail, you know all about it. Bit of glue. Now I thought I wanted this tail sticking up, so I messed around with it for quite a while. And it ended up falling to the ground and that was fine too. It looked more natural that way anyway. I could have put something there like a sponge or a bit of foam or something to, to make it hold its shape but with the tail sticking up but I really didn't mind that it went flat. Now I'm going to put the head on so I'm just measuring with this toothpick how much I need. I don't want the toothpick to poke out the front so I break the toothpick. I only need a little bit. Just checking that the head's going to look good on there. I think that looks pretty good. Just checking from all angles that I'm happy with it. And now I'm going to make the collar. This is a mold that I made. I just put heaps of tylos and a bit of fondant and then pressed the little pattern into it for his collar, the little spikes, and now it's really, really stiff, rock hard, ready to go. And I've got my black fondant ready to make his collar. And I'm gonna press some corn flour into the mold so it doesn't stick. I've realized here that my black fondant is way too soft and sticky. I've only just made the black fondant. So I need some tylos in there. Otherwise it'll just stick to the mold probably and it won't hold its shape when we get it out of the mold. So we do need it a little bit firm. I'm just checking that for the firmness that I need. Rolling it into a fat sausage. So I can press it with my fingers into the mold first, making sure we've covered all those grooves and then using a rolling pin to really flatten it out nicely. I'm checking the thickness here. I don't want it too thick, so I'm just going to go a little bit more, make it a little bit thinner. There we go. Now when getting it out of the mold, it's best to work with gravity. Do the bit that you're taking out underneath. And that actually worked pretty cool. You can see the little ridges of his collar. Now I've got to trim it. So I'm just making sure it's straight before I get my bench scraper and give it a good chop. Then the edges just need to be smoothed over with my finger. And now I'm checking that for thickness and it's a bit too thick, so I'm going to trim it again on the other side. Now I've realised I have to stick the head down before I do the collar, so just a bit of glue. And now we can put the collar on. So a bit of glue on the collar. In a minute. 
I'm just checking first, just making sure it looks okay. Now some glue on the collar. And secure it on there. Now in hindsight, I wish I had done the join in a better spot. It's a little bit conspicuous right there. I wish I'd done it at the back. And maybe put a little bit of glue right on the join as well. I don't know what that is. That's not my hair because I'm not grey haired. Sorry about that. Okay, so there he is. There's the outline. I need some black petal dust and I didn't have any. So I watched YouTube and saw how to make it. So it's just vodka and black gel colouring. Making sure it's not it's um, opaque. And then a bit of cornflour and mix them both together. Now I've realised that's way too dry and I need some more vodka in there. So I do that a few times, mixing it up. And I wanted to make sure it was really black, so I just added a little bit more. This wasn't the perfect consistency. It did end up kind of drying, but not really. It was still a little bit damp, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go, we're going to use it anyway. There's me trying to loosen it up. And then getting a paintbrush and seeing how our homemade petal dust goes. And you know what? It, it worked, but it's not ideal. It was really messy. I was getting a lot of fallout. I've sped this up so much because I felt like I was doing it forever to get the right depth of colour that I wanted. I was looking at a photo of Odin, this dog, the whole time just to make sure I was getting his markings as good as I could. He's a strange coloured dog, mostly white on the front with sort of blackish, brownish, light coloured ears. It was really weird. I'm using a paintbrush here just to keep cleaning up the mess of the fallout as I go because it really did create a lot of fallout. A little bit of black on his muzzle. Oh, now I'm just doing his nose. This was just a little ball that I shaped into a little triangle and stuck on. I used a ball tool to, for his nostrils and I didn't like it. Then I used the back of a toothpick. And now getting started on the markings on his back. This is sped up about 13 times faster than my actual hands doing it. it. Took a really long time, but it worked. He's really dark brown, but I started with black and now I'm going to add the brown over the top to make those dark brown patches. And just doing the rest of the brown around his body. Clean it up. And now some pink for the inside of his ears. And around his muzzle and a little bit on his cheeks and in his mouth. Okay, now I'm getting the blue ready for his pupils, very light blue eyes. And the white for the eyeballs, bit of tylos, and just trying to get two balls the same size. Poke them in. I did actually cut a bit out because I did some eyes and I didn't like them, so redoing. I've made a little recess for the pupils this time, which I didn't do the first time and it looked weird. So just a little ball and then we'll smoosh to make it a nice flat, round um, iris of his eyes. These are the pupils, the little black bit. Tiny, tiny little dots that I smooshed with my fingers and then used the ball tool to smoosh into shape.
and using my clay tool to move it around where I want it. And playing with that for quite a bit. Now I'm going to do just like um, a bit of black around his eyes. So make a tiny sausage, cut that tiny sausage in half, make another tiny sausage and then cut that tiny sausage in half and make two tiny sausages out of that. Use glue to stick that down. Just defines the eyes. and finishes them off. And now the tiny, tiny white dot reflection in his pupil. So tiny. They're even smaller than like a non-pareal. Smooshing them down with a ball tool. And there we go. Oh no, we're not finished. Making the tongue now. So I just start with a bit of a sausage and flatten it out at one end. I use the bench here just to get a nice flat piece. And then I'm going to use the veining tool. Make that line. And checking for length. How long do we want this tongue? That's way too long. So I'm just going to cut a bit off. Pinch and flatten and try that. Still too long. So cut a bit off, pinch and flatten. Check that. Yep, yeah, that's good. Bit of glue. Position that where I want it. And secure it with the veining tool. And now it's time to do the studs on his collar. A bit of silver edible glue. Oh, edible glitter, not glue. Vodka, and here I go, super fast, cleaning all those little studs and really happy with how that turned out. Did the trick. And by using black, I only had to do one coat of silver on there, on these, which is good because it took a lot longer than it looks. And there's the join of the collar right there. And I'm just using a bit of vodka on a clean brush just to clean up any fallout from the petal dusts. Make sure he's nice and clean. And here he is. I'm pretty happy with him. I think he's got just the right amount of stuffiness about him. And he came out pretty cute. I will be making much more regular videos from now on, now that my youngest has started school. So if there's anything specific you'd like to see me make, please let me know in the comments. Thanks to everyone who's hung around for five years waiting for this. <laughs> I hope you got something out of it. Please subscribe to encourage me to make more and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.